I was here at Lake Whitney, Texas, uh, March 10th, 2005, racing for Honda Houston as an amateur, 16 years old. At the time I was here, motocross was everything. It was my only goal in life to become a professional, and at that, hopefully the best, one of the best. Getting hurt at 16 and just get, getting everything taken away, motocross-wise, um, it was pretty harsh. I remember like laying on the track and realized my back was broken, and um, first thing, it's weird, first thing that popped in my head was, damn, I can't race anymore, I can't ride anymore. Um, not even the thought of not walking or being in a chair really entered my mind. Getting into real life after I was 16 was kind of, that didn't really bother me, I was not racing anymore. And, um, you know, I was now later, I'm 23, and um, life goes on, there's more to it than just moto. And uh, it, it's not, I've kind of accepted not becoming a motocross racer anymore and, and uh, enjoying life a lot, a lot more. here at Lake Whitney, Texas. Just uh, came together with another guy, my buddy, and ended up breaking my back, coming to T7 paraplegic. I was kind of stoked on it at first. It was kind of like a new challenge. Um, picked up whatever I could and tried to make it go fast. Uh, trying to jump off curbs, down skate ramps, whatever. Just try to get into any type of auto racing. Uh, first came a stock car truck and then uh, a late model and a short course truck. Uh, I got on, back on my dirt bike about a year later. So I, I sat in my garage thinking, how am I gonna do this? Um, what type of seat do I need? And gotta protect my legs because if I fall. Uh, so my dad, I was out there sitting in the garage thinking of the materials and how to do it. My dad's like, you wanna ride right now? I'm like, uh, yeah, he's like, well, let's do it then. He's kind of mad at me because I was thinking about riding. So, guy, guy rolled duct tape, strapped me to my 250F, and went down my driveway, and it was pretty cool. You know, I came back to the house, didn't know what to do, just stopped up and up against the, the house. And my mom was at the neighbor's house, and she was like, she came down, and she was like, was Ricky riding? And like, I was strapped to my bike after she came into the house a little bit more, and uh, yeah, she was like, what the hell's going on? You know, so it was just. Since then, been progression, got electronic shifting, electric start, um, a 450. You know, that made things a lot easier riding the KTM 450. I felt comfortable when I was riding. I was never sketchy or um, scared. Sometimes on some jumps I would be, and it's just, it kind of felt better to go faster than kind of be cautious, you know. Like, um, it was just natural, and I like going fast, and it, you ride better when you're, you go fast into your limit sometimes rather than thinking about not going fast. I like turn tracks, you know, but then the jumps would, would, uh, would eat me alive and ended up wadding up at Paula uh, like two years ago, the day before the national. So it, everything was pretty peaked up and came down the downhill and tried hitting one of the biggest doubles there, um, if not the biggest, and just big mounds and cased it and wadded up and I thought I was done for maybe done for good, you know, it was, it was scary coming up short on the 100 foot jump and uh, case and went head first into the ground with my bike falling me in and that thing strapped me, just started flipping me and whipping me and uh, dislocated my shoulder and broke my back again. So I tried riding a little bit after that and just hurt too much and uh, met all my goals on my dirt bike and uh, I'm ready to grow up a little bit and buckle down on some, some really gnarly goals. Being a para paraplegic, living as one, um, is frustrating, uh, ups and downs. Um, like I said, it was at first a challenge, it was new. Uh, I kind of treat it as an injury. I would say it's as an injury instead of like a lifestyle. 
Um, I'm like, you know, I've broken my legs, have leg casts, arm casts, so it was just kind of like another injury, okay, get around to it. And, and then it was kind of like dirt bike and truck racing and how much, how far into racing can I get? And then I realized that whole scene. But uh, after that, it kind of set in, you know, after about five years, really set in like, dang, this isn't going away. And um, dating chicks is way different. And going to the beach is different. And everything, it just starts wearing down. It started wearing down on me. Um, after those five years, I was just kind of over it. Um, didn't want to do anything anymore. Uh, realized what I was going after was kind of fake. Um, and not spend enough time kind of like on real life stuff. Uh, so it got a little gnarly after that for a little bit. Setting goals is, was the only thing I think that saved me going out and doing stuff. Um, once I ran out of those goals, it, it was bleak for, for a couple years and um, didn't have a reason to wake up. Didn't want to, didn't, didn't care what I did. Uh, didn't care who I hung out with. Uh, didn't care to really go to school um, to make any progress in my life. There is no desire to do that anymore. Um, but now I, I had to snap out of it. I had to get out of, out of the funk and realize that life was still out there and there was still a lot of cool opportunities if I actually wanted them. And, and it's no fun being depressed. And it's not cool. It, it wasn't going to go away go away so new goals I had to come up with new goals and once I got my head right and uh, was being good for once um, things started clicking and um, my relationship with my parents is way better and my friends and the people around me just see a lot a big difference from where I was a year ago um, and it's not fake it's real you know it's I am happy I'm the happiest I've ever been and um, not shameful or uh, or guilty for the things I I, was, I am doing. I think I everything I have right now I'm I'm earning and I like it that way. Um, and now these new goals, uh, doing Ironman, it was one of the best times of my life. Um, but now I think it's better. I think I can do it better. Uh, so I want a second chance at it and and do it for real this time and and then carry it on and and try. Uh, try to do some more with this endurance sport um, that no one else has ever done before. And I'm not even gonna say what I wanna do, but it's a big goal that this Ironman thing is just to train to get to what I wanna do. He goes for things 100%. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, if he's into something, man, he, he goes for it all the way, whether, whether that's good or bad. And he's certainly had his, uh, his roller coaster ride since he was injured, but I mean, doesn't that happen to everybody? You know, so it's it's magnified because of the fact he's in a chair and his options are few. Um, so he's you know he's done a lap in, in certain areas where some might uh, feel like, what are you doing? But he's very curious and he likes to know things and he likes to experiment and find things out for himself. So uh, the fact that he's had a you know a few dark pace places along the way, uh, I have too. And uh, you know there have been times when I didn't even really want to live anymore and. It takes one to know one, and I've seen the look on his face at times where he was pretty bummed out and, and uh, wants to do things, and they're either harder or he can't. But, man, uh, he's persevered, and I'm really proud of him. Ironman triathlon consists of a 2.4 mile swim, a 112 mile bike ride, and a marathon, 26.2 run. Um, bike, I do on a hand cycle, so it's like hand crank bike. And then the run I do in a racing chair, which is, um, they kind of look similar, I guess, if you don't know the difference, but uh, uh, you just have, you wear gloves and the hand rims for, um, for the racing chair, and there's no gears or anything on it. And 
you kind of, you, you say pushing the chair and, and riding the bike. So it's, it's two different techniques and two different completely muscle groups. You know, R Ricky James has got one of the biggest, baddest hearts um, in a sense where, you know, when he does come here and train, I don't have to hold him accountable. He's here and he gives me everything uh, that I ask for. Never bitches, never complains, doesn't whine. Uh, always punctual, uh, very respectful, um, and gives me everything he, you know, he's got. You know, so it, it's awesome working with a guy like that, and he's like a sponge. Anything you tell him, he's like, all right, cool, I got you, I got you. Never a bad attitude, you know. So um, guys like that, you know, I'm always rooting for the underdog, um, you know, in the corner of the guy who wants to work the hardest. And, um, you know, I'm not just talking the talk, but at the end of the day, putting in the work. So he's one of those guys that's awesome. It's truly a privilege. Eight, nine, ten, 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 up, 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 ten, nine. Compared to 08 when I did Ironman, um, I think I'm way faster, way stronger, way better um, than I was. Uh, I'm more focused this time. Um, I have more of a passion for it instead of just a cross off my list. I actually kind of, not saying I didn't care about it before, but I, I didn't have 100% invested into it like I do right now. Since this being my first time working with a paraplegic, uh, you know, first off, he's just got a great attitude. I mean, he was really patient with me, gave me an opportunity to kind of learn a little bit and research, and um, absolutely, it is day and night difference. But at the same time, it's so rewarding, you know, and being able to, as a, a biomechanic, uh, looking at different muscle groups and what's a primary for him, what's a secondary, what's a stabilizing, fascinates me. And that's really been, you know, what, what, what's kind of been a lot of fun. You know, I, I can think um, that this is a great exercise, but until he starts utilizing it and he starts feeling it when he's riding, when he's swimming, um, he gives me feedback and we're like, all right, that's the one. We want to continue doing that or, eh, I didn't feel that one so much. Let's go ahead and clip that out. Working out and uh, eating right and trying not to go out at night, you know, I'm young, you know, trying not to go to the bowling alley too much and get a couple pitchers of beer and um, going out, you know, it's, it's, it's hard um, to resist, you know, I feel like a loner sometimes and just try to isolate so I don't go out and, and do that, but I have good friends that we kind of, you know, do cool stuff now and I still have fun. I'm not like, you know, Mr sit in the house and go train every day, but uh, it, it is torture sometimes, but there's something about it that I, I'm hooked to right now and hooked on is keep pushing, always get better like motocross, you can always get better and um, breaking it down now, um, get better with my swim technique and it, it, it sometimes I don't want to go work out, but once I get into it, I'm like, I don't want to really stop, I want to keep going and push and um, it's it's kind of weird. Everything makes it makes everything better as well. Um, my life, my confidence, your mind, everything. It it helps with everything. And I, if if anyone has a free time, I recommend it. It makes everything in their life better. I think. His ability to adapt is uh, it's rare. You know, there's not that many people that can excel in just such a short time like he did in motocross. I mean, he only rode for about four years and he was already racing with the Alessis and Josh Grant and all the new kids that were coming up that are doing well now. And he carried that same uh, God-given or natural ability or whatever you want to call it over to truck racing and now into triathlon. So it's, you know, he, he likes having me, I think, to, you know, for advice and as a mentor since I've done a bunch of them, but it, it's, really fun for me to, to see what he can do and, and uh, he bites off a lot you know maybe more than he can chew sometimes but he always figures out a way to chew it and inspire everybody that's watching. I, I've been riding a hand cycle since 1996 and the first one I had I nicknamed the Lincoln Town Car. It was heavy, it was wide, I, I couldn't even fit through the, the poles to you know the posts they cement in the ground to even get to certain bike paths. Um, it flexed a lot 
the, the chain rubbed my knee. There were so many problems with it. And even though I helped evolve all that stuff and then did my last Ironman in 2009 on more of the, the laid down recline style bike, I never liked my bike. Even during the last Ironman I did, I'm out there for 112 miles, roughly seven hours. And the whole time I was out there, I'm, of course I had the race on my mind, but I was thinking, these bikes could be so much better. And you know, having raced a factory Honda, um, you know, I set my, my sights pretty high on what I think uh, is possible and what I would rather be riding. So uh, since the end of 09 and until now, I've been developing a hand cycle that I feel is going to be uh, more rider friendly, more affordable, a little sexier and look a lot like the rest of the bikes in the bike shop and uh, a little lighter and, and hopefully a lot faster. So. Uh, to have a kid like Ricky to hop on it and go, you know, and send me a text going, you ain't getting it back, you know, was, was probably the best compliment I could ever have. So I know what I want, but I'm 50 and I'm not going quite as fast as he's going anymore. And to have somebody like Ricky to test this thing is, is awesome. And the fact that, that he likes it, it makes it even better. So it's Monday, about 12 o'clock. Um, fly out tomorrow for Texas in the morning uh, for my half, half Ironman qualifier. Um, gotta get top two there. There's some pretty gnarly guys. Um, but I had a nice little warm up today. Kind of final, final things, final touch ups and make sure everything's good. Body's feeling all right. A little aches and pains here and there, but it's kind of like the Ironman triathlete life is you're always going to have something sore, so I feel pretty good though, and all my times have been right on, and couldn't ask for anything more. I've met every one of my goals so far throughout training up until this point, and all my fastest times have come over like the past two weeks, so I feel good, and like I said, go hammer it, um, try to go sub six hour, half Ironman, and qualify for Hawaii in October, uh, make all this training pay off, and show my sponsors like two times you and 100% um, you know that they believed in me for a reason so we'll see how it goes and thanks for everyone for watching this and hopefully I come back with a good story That logo's bad too. Which one? The one in the middle. Uh, I like that one. 100%? Yeah. That looks so good. Cool, huh? Way good. Got my white on. Oh, you're set. It's the New Jersey, huh? I wouldn't want to race you. I'd be, <laughs> already, I'd be so psyched already. Like, <laughs> look at it. You know what? Uh, let me just get a cab back to the airport. I gotta race this thing.